Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. In today's video, we are doing a party prep for a garden themed slash nerf themed birthday party. I offered to host my mom and my niece and nephew's birthday at my house and those were the kind of collective themes that we were gonna throw together. So anyways, we are starting off by making some meringue cookies. I thought that it would be fun to have like little flowers and I have acrylic cake pop sticks that I figured I would test out and see if they can withstand the heat that I use to actually make these cookies. So I made these cookies like over the course of a few days because I didn't, I don't have like all the time in the world just to, you know, pipe different colors and all this other stuff. So I would do like a batch one day and then try a different flower the next. But anyways, I am measuring out my egg whites and then multiplying the weight in grams by 1.25 to determine how much sugar I also need to add. Then I cook it um, like in a double boiler to get to about 50 degrees Celsius, which I believe is like 122-ish degrees Fahrenheit. And then once it is off, I whip it up, add some vanilla, and pipe away. So on my first attempt, again, I was just making sure my cake pop sticks would withstand the heat, which they did. We have a relatively low heat, um, somewhere between 180 to 200 degrees. So that's kind of like the goal. And uh, they worked really well. So I'm super excited because it's so much more fun to eat these you know, cookies on a stick, in my opinion, rather than just having like to hold it in your hand. In addition to the flowers, I practiced piping a snail because my niece especially loves snails. She wanted to have like a snail race, so I'll talk more about that later. But this was kind of my first attempt and I did make some more in the future on a different day. To make these cookies, you really have to like leave them in like let's just say a 200 degree oven for a few hours depending on the thickness of your cookie and then you turn off the oven and leave them in the oven until pretty much the oven cools down to room temperature so it's like an all-day process that's again why i made them on separate days but aubrey just had to try one she was insistent so i wanted to see how they turned out anyways and these ones cooked nicely through so on a different day i decided to do little roses and then on another day I wanted to make like daisy looking ones which I didn't film like up close but you'll see them at the end of this video. Moving on I wanted to do some like little succulent pots so I have this succulent mold that I got from Michael's and I had some like melting chocolates on hand that I just wanted to use up. So I melted some green and white because I didn't want it to be too dark of a green and melted those melting chocolates and then just poured it in our mold. Then I also had some blue melting chocolates that I thought I would kind of dye green just to make like a darker green so that we'd have a little bit of variation. So after filling these molds, you guys will see me put them in their pots, which are just little Reese's cups.
So I actually did this step on a different day. I am putting like all of the like footage together. Otherwise you guys would probably just have a headache seeing what I actually did in the order that I actually did it. So hopefully, you know, you guys will understand I'm not doing everything in this exact order, but I wanted to show you guys like start to finish what each little item looked like. So after I was done making these little succulents, I did still have some chocolate that I had melted. So I figured I would use some pretzel sticks, which I was gonna use for another little treat. And I wanted to just use the rest of my chocolate up to make little trees. And then I will also be sticking these into the mini Reese's so that we could have them like potted tree plant type things. So moving on to the real reason I had pretzel sticks, I wanted to use these to dip some chocolate in. I'm using orange and blue, and my goal was to make these look like little Nerf bullets. So a lot of the times I think the Nerf bullets are like mostly orange with like a blue tip. So I decided to dip most of the pretzel in the orange melting chocolates that I had. And then once that cooled, I was gonna dip the other tip of the pretzel into some dyed blue melting chocolates. So you know you kind of have to know what I was going for in the first place to understand what these were but when you know they're supposed to be little nerf bullets I do think that they were a really easy and cute treat So not totally Nerf related, but I thought it would be cute to put some pixie sticks and we're gonna label these as gunpowder later on, just to cater to my little nephew's theme. Moving on, we're gonna bake one of two desserts, you know, formal desserts for this birthday party. We're gonna do what we call the better than anything cake in this house. And you guys can screenshot the recipe card, but we're just making a German chocolate cake, like box cake, following the instructions. And then once that is cooled, we will be poking holes in it, pouring on sweetened condensed milk and hot fudge, putting that in the fridge until it totally cools down, and then topping it off with some Cool Whip and crushed Heath bar. I just can't let you go. Lord knows that I've tried to. You said I was the only one. No one likes being lied to. 
You made this mess and left me with the pieces Now I wanna burn all the bridges between us So I totally could have left the cake, you know, like as is following the recipe, but I wanted to make it fit the theme somehow. And since the crushed Heath bar kind of looks like dirt, I thought it would be kind of cute to add some gummy worms on top of the cake just to, you know, have it fit the garden theme. Moving on, we're gonna be making some cheesecake. This is a recipe that I got from a friend like many years ago. It is delicious and very easy to make. There are some more difficult cheesecake recipes that I've tried in the past, and this one's definitely an easy one. So the reason I'm making cheesecake in addition to the better than anything cake is because this was my nephew's like desired dessert for his birthday party, and I really wanted to make my niece and nephew like feel special for their birthday party. My mom was happy with like whatever so that's why we're doing just the two desserts for my niece and nephew but my nephew really loved the churro cheesecake that I made one time on this channel but I have to say he was the only person in the family that was like over the top in love with that dessert a lot of my other family members you know said that it was good but like not one of their favorite desserts so I asked my nephew like is it okay if I make you your personalized churro cheesecake and then just make like little cheesecake cups for everyone else to snack on and he was fine with that so this is the first time that I'm making this recipe in cupcake form and it turned out pretty good I have to say that the crust was pretty thick and I figured that was the safest bet because there are people who really like the crust and like it thick and other people who maybe just want a thinner crust and want to focus more on the cheesecake portion, they don't have to eat the crust. And so I went on the thicker side just to kind of be safe. But overall, I am happy with how these turned out. And while I'm not using the exact cheesecake recipe that I used for the churro cheesecake, my nephew said that he absolutely loved his dessert. I asked him to rate it from like one to 10 and he gave it a one, but <laughs> it turns out that he thought one was the best. So I am really excited that he was pleased with his dessert and everyone else seemed to like the cheesecake as well so it was a win-win i'm glad that i did it and it was cool that i got to try the cupcake form as well day 
breaks and I'm burned by the morning light I make the same mistake more than twice Same song, but brand new dance I wear out my third second chance You take my breath and I can't get it back Might be time for me to face the facts The best me is with you But I know I got a lot to prove too damaged to fix but we're just working through a little rust they like to say we're just young but i know we won't give this up sometimes i lose my mind and some days it's hard to find the reason why you stay by my side So unfortunately, I don't have a clip of the final result of this cheesecake. I was just kind of trying to wing it since it wasn't the exact recipe and the exact portion. But like I said, my nephew was in love with it. He, he was very happy with his dessert. So that's really all that matters. So moving on, we are going to decorate my glass board. I originally wanted to write happy Nerf day instead of birthday and have Nerf kind of looking like little Nerf bullets, but it didn't, it wasn't like registering. It wasn't really good. So I just decided to color in the letters using orange and blue, use a little Nerf bullet as like a dash. And you'll see me at the very end, I decided to add an exclamation mark as well. But we're gonna set up our little table that I love to put under this glass board and we're using a table cover that I got from Walmart. It was very thin and probably intended for a one-time use, but it didn't really get dirty, so I do plan on using it again. It's very pretty though. I could definitely see it working with like a mermaid themed party but I wanted to do a balloon arch without the balloons. And I had this idea to make it fit the garden party. I wanted to have like leaves and flowers going up my balloon arch little arch. So what I decided to do was take a pool noodle and I spray painted it brown so that it would kind of blend in with the leaves and flowers rather than having it be like this just bright blue pool noodle. And my mom was able to cut down some eucalyptus branches for me. I thought it would be like a good touch to have some real leaves mixed in with my fake flowers just to kind of make it feel a little bit more realistic. So like I said, I'm using my balloon arch kit without actually making balloons for this balloon arch and I'm going to be feeding it through the pool noodle and then with a little bit of magic got it set up and I put my pool noodle off to one side. Then I took some hair ties and stretched them over the pool noodle and kind of spaced them out along the entire length of the noodle and then we're going to be kind of securing the branches with these hair ties. I could have used hot glue, I could have done something a little bit more permanent but I do like the way that this turned out and I really wanted to make sure that if I did like how it turned out uh, that I could reuse my pool noodle and I wouldn't want to reuse it with like real dried up leaves attached. So that is why I'm kind of taking a little bit more of a temporary approach rather than using hot glue or some other adhesive that would be more permanent. But after getting my eucalyptus branches like kind of secured, I also secured some white flowers that I had just like 
in a vase they're they're fake and then i taped on some branches to the like exposed arch that wasn't covered with the pool noodle and then i also took some white roses they're fake as well from our wedding actually and secured them in just to kind of you know elevate the look a little bit more Then for the other side of the arch, I didn't want, you know, the little pieces just totally exposed. So I took some kind of gold glittery white ribbon that I had on hand and just kind of looped it over and over and over until it covered the entire like arch part. And this was just some ribbon that I had, you know, already stored on hand and I had like a couple of them. So I had more than enough to cover the rest of the balloon arch. And like I said, I'm really happy with how this turned out. Moving on to the bathroom, I thought we would decorate using some of the extra eucalyptus branches and I'm securing this to our mirror with some like masking tape and then using wood grain contact paper to kind of go over so that it kind of blends in a little bit more and you don't see big ugly pieces of masking tape. It is still noticeable when you look closely but overall I thought it added like a really nice touch to the bathroom. Next up, my other kind of go-to decoration uh, is decorating the sliding glass door that leads to our backyard. And I thought it would be really cute to have like Nerf bullets kind of going in one direction on one door and then the opposite direction on the other door to kind of make it look like they're being shot at each other when the door actually slides open. So that is what I was going for here. On the bottom of the door, I thought it would be cute to add a little bit more for the garden theme at least. So Aubrey and I drew some flowers and then I just kind of let her decorate however she wanted at the bottom of the door. For above the island, my goal was to make it look like Nerf bullets were like floating, but I was kind of getting into a time crunch and I didn't, you know, gather some like more see-through or very thin materials. I just kind of used twine and ribbon, but I still think the final look ends up being kind of cute with some Nerf bullets just floating in the air. Now we're gonna move on and talk about some of the activities that I had planned. So I had this cute little like vase that's a little chick with an egg and then it was for a bouquet many years ago. So I just kind of broke this out. Easter was the next day, so I figured I could start kind of incorporating my Easter decorations and I thought it would be cute. I saw this like person on TikTok making some pipe cleaner flowers and these little daisies looked really cute and they were relatively easy to make. So I made Made a few of them and then put out the rest of my pipe cleaners for anyone else who wanted to add to the bouquet and I thought it would just kind of be cute in this little stand and a fun little activity for the little kids or even the adults that attended the party.
Next up, we're going to make the signs or labels for the different items that I've made for this party. And I had these little like wooden log stick things. I don't know what they're called, but I got them from the Dollar Tree a while ago. They came in like a big pack and then some mini clothespins. And so what I did was I just glued one to each little log so that I could secure like the label for each item so that it like kind of looks like the log is holding it up. And I just kind of thought it would be a cute way to incorporate the garden theme in our labels. So another activity that I had planned for this party was just kind of like a guess how many are in the box, but I originally wanted to do like guess how many gummy worms, but I had a lot of these eucalyptus leaves left over. So I put 47 leaves in this box and let my family guess how many were actually in there. So it was like kind of a, a fun little thing to have everyone get involved with during the party. So next up was definitely my favorite part of this entire party. So weeks ago, my niece said that she would love to have like a snail race and you know, just we kind of left it at that. There was nothing really in particular that was said about what this activity would entail. So I came up with this game. I made this little snail using random craft supplies that I had on hand. And I thought it would be funny if we could drag the snail around the back loop of our backyard with the condition that the snail could never jump or bounce off the ground. If it bounced, you would have to like retrace your steps, go to the start of the race and then continue along the loop until it makes one whole loop around our backyard. And the way we executed this game was each person got to, you know, have their shot. Each We each took turns and your competitors could follow you and make sure that your little snail didn't jump and they would call you out if, if the snail jumped at all. And I was cracking up. My nieces and nephews were practicing. Even my brother was like practicing before the actual race occurred. And it was just the funniest thing to watch everyone drag this little snail around the backyard. And then for the first, second, and third place prizes, I went ahead and made some hot glue snails to give away to the winners. So we're gonna wrap up this party prep by just throwing everything together on our display table. I did come up with a solution for displaying my meringue cookies in a little flower pot using some cardboard that I had on hand. And like I said, I'm really happy with how everything turned out. I know that a garden themed Nerf party is not one that you know many people will attempt, but I think I did a pretty good job at kind of tying things together and making it feel somewhat cohesive. Closer, we can do my place. 
I'd like to thank you guys for watching today's video and supporting my channel. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. And if you guys are new here, I would love for you to stick around and subscribe and check out all of my other party prep videos. I actually have a lot on this channel and I really hope you guys enjoy. to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness and I will catch you in the next one.